Welcome back to True Footy, everyone. Today we are doing AFL Underrated, Overrated. If you haven't seen the previous ones, essentially, you guys give me a topic and I tell you whether I think that thing is underrated or overrated. Thinking about doing these videos about once a month, if you wanna see previous editions of this and similar types of videos, click up the top right corner of this video and you'll see a playlist where I do other videos just like this. So what I did was go to the market, I went to Instagram, I posted a story and you guys came through with the goods once again and you've given me some great topics to discuss in this video, which I'm gonna get straight into. So the first one is from someone called Sankit who says Luke Bruce. So is Luke Bruce underrated or overrated? I'm going to say he has become underrated, probably. He kicked 47 goals this year. And I think sometimes like really prolific players in weaker teams definitely go underappreciated. Throughout his career, I think Luke Bruce had an amazing profile and he was an amazing player. So I think that's about right. But to kick 47 goals in a team like Hawthorne that came third last last year, he's erring on the side of underrated. The next one is from Daniel Savinos, who says Nick Larkey. I think you can apply the same logic to Nick Larkey here. With Larkey, like I can only speak about my own perspective here, and I know that he touched up West Coast at least once, but it kind of got to the end of the season where I saw his goal tally and that he was like third in the Coleman. It did help that he kicked like nine in the final round, but I was like, wow, that is actually a really prolific season for a guy that played in the bottom two sides of his 70-odd goals. So I'd probably say he's underrated. I certainly don't think he's overrated, but I think All-Australian was about right. That was justified. Rowan Disley's thrown a few at me, and he says that I can't say any of these players are fairly rated. I have to pick one or the other. So on a few of them, I can lean on the fence a little bit, but these I can't. Ollie Wines. I think he is probably underrated, actually, based on perception, okay? Do I think he's a Brownlow quality player? No, I, I don't necessarily think so, but he had a terrific season that year. He certainly hasn't replicated that form since. Sometimes winning a Brownlow can have the opposite effect where everyone sort of reacts, oh, he didn't deserve that, whereas no, he's still a pretty good player. Jack Darling? Well, he's definitely not overrated. I would say he's probably underrated, but he did also have a poor year last year. I could, I would say underrated and I expect him to have an improved year and I think most have assumed he's washed up and I don't think he's quite there yet. So erring on the side of underrated. Jai Simkin, probably underrated. Again, I think he's, he's a pretty damn good player. I think he had two really good seasons in a row for North and I don't think 2023 was great for him off the top of my noggin. That being said, still, you know, probably just in the primary of his career now, I think probably erring on the side of underrated. Hayden Young. Uh, probably overrated by Fremantle fans a little bit, but still going to be a very, very good player. And I don't blame Fremantle fans for that. The hype around Hayden Young when you talk to Fremantle fans is unreal, but he probably doesn't have that much of a profile outside of Fremantle fans, and reality lies somewhere in the middle. I think he's going to be a very good, I think he's going to be an A-grade player. But you talk to some Fremantle fans, and they seem to think that he's going to transcend A-grade. Good player, though. Not trying to talk shit. Jacko661 says, Sam Draper. That is tough. Find that one a little bit hard to rate. I think he has shown obviously some great glimpses. In terms of overall output, like I don't think he outperformed Bailey Williams from West Coast this year if you look at raw numbers. I could have that completely wrong. I didn't prepare for this video in the same way that I do for my more analytical pieces, but he does have more of a profile. So I err on the side of saying overrated, but I don't, that's not an opinion I'd strongly hold because I do think he is young for a Ruckman. He's probably just entering his prime and he could probably be a very, very good player. So I feel harsh saying that, but in the interest of not trying to sit on the fence, he's probably more overrated than underrated. Emmy McIver says LDU. Uh, yeah, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I'm a huge LDU fan and I think it has probably gotten missed how unbelievably good this guy could be if he can keep fit for a whole season, like genuine Brownlow contender. Baker says, Port Adelaide's recruits. Um, I don't think there's too much massive public uh, praise for those recruits in isolation. I don't think anyone is saying that that's going to change Port Adelaide or anything like that. I don't think it would be overrated. I don't think anyone's making that claim. In isolation, none of those players are necessarily standout players. Of the four that they got, I'd say that Soldo and probably Zerk Thatcher are my favorite two to become good long-term players. Asava has the potential and Jordan Sweet's probably a little bit more speculative, but maybe an underrated move in the sense that they kind of needed to make those moves. And I respect that they've been very proactive in trying to plug their list gaps. So maybe I'd say underrated because I don't think they're overrated. Now I'm going to take this small opportunity to just quickly shout out a few new members to the True Footy YouTube channel. As it happens, I record a lot of my videos well in advance. So a lot of these members have been members for a little while, but they are brand new as I record this. Yeet, God, Obama. We got Simon, we got Jack, we got Stainer, Tim, 
and Jake, all brand new members of the True Footy YouTube channel. I just want to shout you guys out and say thank you very much for hopping on board. Ashton Hurd says David Mundy. Um, pff, underrated. Again, like he's got a profile in, in WA. Uh, but in terms of how good he's been for a... Well, how good he was for a long period of time and still playing arguably career, career's best football at like 34. Like, that's that's unbelievable. I think genuinely underrated, probably. Bowie Genius is Josh Weddle. Yeah, probably erring on the side of underrated. I think there's a bit of a profile out there, but I think Hawthorne fans are huge on this guy, but it hasn't quite translated to everyone in the league thinking he's good. And I think he is a very good player with... Uh, a pretty good athletic profile and a high ceiling. So probably underrated, definitely not overrated. Lucas Green says Jacob Van Royen. Oh, this is probably the first one where I'd say probably fairly rated. I think he's a gun young key position forward. Probably should have gone higher in his draft looking at how well he's played so far. And I think he does have the profile that suits that. I think most people expect him to be a good player and that aligns with my opinion. So that's about right. Leo King says big fantasy scores. Definitely overrated, but not completely irrelevant. I mean, when you, you factor in who are the biggest fantasy pigs in the game right now, um, you know, Tim English probably is number one. Uh, may, maybe that's not actually true. But like high volume rucks like English and Marshall, like they're right up there, right? And you know, back in the day, it used to be Tom Rockliffe. None of these players are considered the best players in the game. So if you're one of those players who gets those 200s, or close to those 180s, uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean you are the most impactful player in the game at that given time. Leo King says, West Coast 2018 Premiership season. I say underrated. Um, I think I think it kind of just equates to most Premiership seasons. Like, we were a very good team this year. Uh, Maybe underrated in the sense that uh, I, I kind of resent a little bit these talk about, you know, Richmond had it in the bag. I, I don't necessarily think that's true. But I wouldn't say it's underrated, really. I think uh, we won a premiership. Most teams get up there and win one. There's been a few teams that are able to back it up. But um, yeah, I think we got what, is, what we deserved. Baker's 8 says, point system in academy picks. Uh, the point system itself, um, I, probably underrated because I, I don't feel like people love it. But I do think that the system probably is still better now than it used to be. Obviously, academies are new and the point system was developed with that in mind. Uh, but, you know, if it was treated like the father-son rule back in the day, like it used to just be, you know, when, when Gary Ablett got drafted to Geelong, it was just that team's third round pick that year. So while it is kind of a weird gamey system that you can exploit, you still are making teams work a lot harder to get the players that they are entitled to. I'm not saying the system in general is perfect, but the point system, it's, it's okay. Could it be improved? Absolutely. Isaac Brown says, true footy, underrated or overrated? And he says underrated. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Uh, I don't think it necessarily it is underrated or overrated, to be honest. I think, uh, I think I've think i kind of worked really hard and accumulated some growth on the channel, and I think I more or less got what I deserved. And playing the game of YouTube is a game unto itself. So I appreciate the compliment, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay with where I'm at. Uh, Espo Tigerland says, Noah Bolter. Probably are on the side of underrated. Good young player. And again, when a team fades into obscurity a little bit, sometimes their best performers go a little bit underappreciated. And, and maybe that's where Richmond is at this current point in time. It'll be interesting to see how he develops as a forward. Brody Allen points out handball merchants. And he reckons that McRae and Mitchell, uh, for example, work maybe goes disregarded as cheap possessions. Probably fair. Probably fair. I do think that a higher kick to handball ratio generally is a sign of a more impactful player, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that every handball is a cheap possession because sometimes they involve like really tough hardball gets, like a Lockie Neal sort of scenario. So I would agree with you, probably probably a little bit underrated. Jbazza98 says, having an All-Australian Ruckman on your side. Uh, yeah, probably an overrated concept. You know, I, I think of some of the premiership teams like uh well the eagles obviously come to mind first and we we won it without nat nui who was one of our best players we won that year with lyset and vardy um you know i'm trying to think of uh teams that actually won the premiership whilst having an all australian quality ruck max gorn in 2021 comes to mind geelong you know with their rucks in 2022 that wasn't a particularly strong side you know collingwood winning the premiership with darcy cameron there is a distinct lack of of premiers from what i can tell that have a genuine All-Australian ruck in their team, or at least one of the best rucks in the game. You know, Richmond won it with Soldo and I presume Nank Hervis. I'm going off the top of my head there. I'm sure those guys were premiership players. David Hale for Hawthorne was there for a bit, um, but, you know, underrated player, but not necessarily one of the best. You know, there's McAvoy, good player, not All-Australian necessarily, I don't think. So yeah, I think I've made my point. Probably you know, a bit overrated. Riley Burns says, Jared Witts, underrated, definitely. Good player, doesn't have much of a profile because he's been goalkeeper. Coast captain and you know 
people do tend to have a bit of a blind eye to, to Gold Coast, it has to be said. But he's genuinely been one of their best contributors for a few years now. Bem Gaddy has another Kane Corns one saying, the hate on Kane Corns is stupid. I think his media personality slash take is needed more. So I have talked a little bit about him in the past. And I would say that I, I kind of agree. I've started watching SEN Sports a lot more on YouTube now. And when you see Kane Corns in longer format, as opposed to the, the clipped up and sensationalist headline on Access All Areas, if you, if you watch him on SEN, you do tend to like him a bit more. Definitely don't agree with him all the time, but I do agree like over time that there's a place for takes like that. I stand by all my criticisms of his particular opinions that I've done in the past, but I agree, I have no issue with Kane Corns. Levi McIntosh says Harley Reid. Um, it's too early to really comment, to be honest. Like he deserves a profile he had for being as good a junior as he is, or was. And I must say from what I've seen, you know, the Eagles intra club, like he is translating that at AFL level. Not that it's been AFL level yet, but like I can't, I can't really comment whether he's overrated until he's you know had a good few seasons yet. Ben Williams says Vic bias. Um, do I do I believe in this? Um, do I believe there's any sort of Victorian conspiracy against the interstate clubs? No, I don't. Uh, I don't think there's Vic bias when it comes to umpiring or anything like that. Uh, where I do probably see it is in commentary for some reason, and I'm not just talking about the Eagles, but I've, I've noticed a number of games where I'm just like, why the hell are you barracking for the other team? I remember a game the Eagles played against Carlton and Eddie Maguire was just all over Carlton. And I'll give you a real life example where something shocked me. When I went to the 2018 Grand Final, I encountered so many people, Victorians, because I was in Melbourne, talking about how they were disgusted that Collingwood was in the grand final because they didn't support Collingwood. And I remember on multiple occasions asking if they were going for West Coast and they were like, oh God, no. So there seems to just be this hatred of, well, certainly West Coast. So getting a feel for like what Victorians think of non-Victorian clubs is is awkward. Like I don't really know the answer, but from what I've seen, there generally is a bit of a disdain for at least West Coast. If you're a Victorian fan, I know there's heaps of you out there, subscribe to True Footy. Let me know in the comments, like what do you think is the sentiment of non-Victorian teams, particularly West Coast, let me know in the comments. AFL Guernsey says Dane Zorko. He or she says Zorko's underrated. Five times BNF, one All-Australian, two leading goal kickers, and the Lions captain in successful times. I think there's more here, but I can't read the rest of the comment. You know what, that is a pretty decorated career. Five times BNF, uh, there, I presume a fair bit of that came when the Lions were really poor, but he won an All-Australian and he genuinely was a good player. Uh, two times leading goal kicker is news to me. I did not know that. That is uh, that is impressive for like a small midfielder forward. Possibly a little bit underrated, but I feel like maybe this is just completely subjective, but I feel like sometimes like I read online, Lions fans have gone off Zorko, but sometimes it happens when a player plays late into his career, you kind of forget how good they used to be. I call this the Ricky Ponting effect. Ricky Ponting played on too long. I'm not saying Zorko's played on too long, but yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit underrated, I would agree. Vichy Smalls says, Jackson Nelson. Yeah, former West Coast fringe player. Um, I never got the Nelson hate. I think the listing him at the time we did probably made sense. He played 100 games. He never really pissed me off that much which I realize is not a glowing endorsement, but there, there was a, a little bit of an anti-Nelson brigade out there and I never joined in. So I will say underrated. Callum Morton, friend of the channel, he has been on the channel before, says Misty Watsu. I feel like I probably need to explain this. So we used to work at Bunnings together and there used to be on the soundtrack that song, Roam if you want to, by the B-52s I think it is. And we didn't know the lyrics, so we always used to sing Misty Watsu. So I'll say underrated. <laughs> Russell Graham says West Coast 2006, but take away Cox, Kerr, Cousins, and Judd. Uh, yeah, I can see where you're going with this. I, I agree it was a top heavy team. You take those players out and you get something resembling West Coast in 2008. <laughs> but some very good unheralded players in that team still. Like the back line was very, very good. Quinton Lynch still kicked 65 goals that year. Not an A grader, but decent. I do think that the team as a whole was not as well-rounded as 2018, that's for sure. I feel uncomfortable saying overrated though, because you know, like sure, if you take out the four best players of any team, they're gonna be significantly worse, but the 06 team is not overrated. I think that was the best midfield I've ever seen. Riley Burke says, roaming Brian. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone liked it and it's still overrated. Jack Crisp, finals performer. I like this one. This is from Lenny Fogliani, friend of the channel as well. Yeah, bit of an underrated player for sure. I don't think he's won All-Australian before, but you feel like he's around that quality and has been consistently good for a long time. Like since at least 2018, I remember uh, him being a big player for Collingwood. Raz894 says, the Channel 10 five minute warning. Yeah, as much as it is painful to sit through, that five minute warning 
to end games. I think back to the 06 grand final, they did that as well. You didn't know when the siren was going to blow. Yeah, I think that is underrated. Benjamin Herbert says Shannon Hearn during his prime. Um, so I think I consider the Hearn prime as 18 and 19, but he won all Australian both years. So I think he was fairly rated. And I think he got better as he hit that 30 year old age. Benjamin Herbert also says the AFL MVP award, probably overrated. Like you could argue that it probably is better than the Brownlow because the Brownlow is horrendously flawed really. But if I'm not mistaken, isn't the MVP just like players voting for the opposition. I, I feel like that has so much more sub uh, subjectivity. And with all due respect to the players, like they're probably not the best people to ask because yeah, they play games and they, they, they make judgments on the games that they play, but none of them, I guarantee you, none of them are completely across the league to be able to make assessments like that. Doesn't mean it's not worth having, but it's not a super validating award. Cam Bostock. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's either Cam Bostock or Cam Bostock. Has a great Instagram page, by the way. Go check him out. Cam has two for me. He says, Daniel Kerr, I think underrated. Um, massive Eagles Nuffy speaking here, but I do think that Kerr was very close to being that Cousins level quality. Finished second in the brown load twice, once to his own teammate, which has got to be extremely rare. I think Daniel Kerr, had Sam Mitchell's talent and ability to slow the game down. The only thing that he didn't have was the longevity, like his body wouldn't hold up, but I think he was that quality of player, absolutely. He also says Luke Ryan, and I would agree that Luke Ryan from Fremantle is underrated. He's been a good, consistent player for a while now, and as far as I'm aware, he doesn't have the profile outside of WA. Finally, Anthony Aliciani, shout out the pair, says AFL YouTube scene. Is it underrated or overrated? Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I mean, you could make the argument, like, compared to other sports, there's not a huge following on uh, AFL on YouTube, and it's probably still disproportionate to, like, how much, like, potential following it could have. Like, in a way, like, people like us who have been cracking away from a while, you've transplanted us into another sport without necessarily being any better, and it makes sense that we would have more subscribers and fo and views and stuff like that just purely because the what we're talking about has more interest so from that point of view you could say underrated because you know we're working hard all of us and the reward isn't coming as easy that being said i kind of just think it's on us to rise to the level as well and and produce really strong platforms and that is still a work in progress so Technically, by definition, underrated, but we've got to go out and do the work. Anyway, guys, that'll do for another AFL underrated, overrated. These seem to be popular, so I appreciate you taking the time to contribute to these. Sorry, again, I didn't get to all of them, but I'll consider it for the next month's edition. So like I said, we'll probably do one of these uh, every month. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.